Message to the Black Man in America by Elijah Muhammad, Part 10. Since learning of the prayer service of Islam, the religion of entire submission to the will of Allah, we see him not only trying to keep his internal parts clean, but the external parts too. He washes his face, his hand, and all of the exposed parts of his body before going to prayer. Never before has he done such under the cross Christianity, prostrating himself with his shoes off and his forehead kissing the rug or the bare earth in praises and humble submission to the will of Allah God. He says again in the above prayer that he is thankful to Allah. He thanks Allah for the knowledge of words to say, to know him, to be the true God, to believe in him and worship him alone and not set up a rival to him. No more is he ungrateful to God as he declares in the following words, we are not ungrateful to thee. He no longer befriends an enemy of Allah while under the cross Christianity, he befriended the enemies of God, thinking he was getting the favor or friendship of God by loving and befriending every creature, whether of the religious, whether of the righteous or the devils. In reading the above prayer, we find him forsaking and casting off the ones who do not obey Allah. He is now in accord with the teachings of the Quran, the holy book of Allah, and in accord with the teachings of Jesus and the prophets. We will not find any believers in Allah God who would befriend and show friendship to the enemies and disbelievers of Allah, though they be their near of kin, says the Quran. And the Quran, Surah 60, Ayat 40, gives us an example in Abraham who forsook his father and declared that enmity and hatred had appeared between them until he believed in Allah alone. The Bible again puts it in Jesus' words in the book of Luke chapter 14 verse 26 as he says to his disciples that he must even hate their mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers or they could not be his followers. But here today in America as you may know the Christians teach that we should love everybody. This is just the deceitful way of the devils to get love and honor from the people of God under their religion Christianity that they organize in order to oppose the true religion of Allah Islam now he further says and acknowledges that he prays to Allah alone and makes obedience as it reads in the words of the prayer as follows O Allah thee do we serve and thee do we pray and make obedience he seeks refuge in no other God but Allah and he declares that in the following words of prayer thee do we flee and we are quit he now hastens himself for the refuge in a living God a God that exists a God that he can depend on for help a God who knows and understands all of his life's trouble and woes he is not perfect therefore he hopes for the mercy from the true God in the words of prayer as follows we hope for thy mercy and fear thy chastisement he has learned of the suffering and chastisement of Allah upon those who disbelieve in him. He is no longer an unbeliever for he has surely turned himself being upright to Allah, the originator of the heavens and the earth. In the above prayer, we learn that the whole of the Muslim prayer, as Mulvi Muhammad Ali says, is only a declaration of divine majesty and glory, divine holiness and perfection, and of the entire dependence of man on his maker preface of the Holy Quran. If you would only adopt the sayings of the Muslim prayer, you would be helped. Of all of the praying people on the earth, the Muslims worship to God is in the best manner. The words used in their prayers are the best and most humble. They cast off and forsake those who disobey Allah God. The Christians teach love for the enemy because of the fact that they are really the enemy and desire to mingle with you for the purpose of misleading you. It is nothing but right to sever friendly relations with those who do not care to serve and obey Allah. There are many Muslims and black Christians who, for the sake of certain privileges, do not carry into practice the casting off those who disobey Allah God and think that it is a sin for the true righteous Muslims to do so. Today I am often asked, can white people attend your service? When told that white people are not Muslims, some of the ignorant Muslims falsely charge me in their writings and sayings as not teaching Islam. They also falsely charge that my teachings not only do not represent Islam, but 
it is not recognized by the Muslims world. This is just what the enemies of Islam and the so-called Negroes of America desire that the so-called Negroes believe. They sow such lies in the hearts of the weak Muslims and the so-called Negroes in general. You are going to be greatly surprised. I have a lot on my side to bring my people out of the darkness and power of our enemies. Is not he God sufficient? And most surely he is with me and I with him. You most certainly will be the loser if you are not on our side. The Lord's Prayer, as it is called, contains some words that should not have been written there, such as, lead us not into temptation. God will not lead us into temptation. It is the devil that tempts us to sin. The above words show a lack of confidence in God to lead us aright, that he must be reminded just how to lead us. Another is, give us this day our daily bread. Here again, the words, this day, could lead one to believe that on that day the prayer was given there was a shortage of bread or that the Christians prayer seek the physical bread first and the spiritual bread last even though the Bible says you first seek the kingdom of heaven and all things shall be added unto you that's in the book of Luke chapter 12 verse 31 in another place it says man should not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God Matthew 4 4 these scriptures are contrary to the prayer, although it stands true of the Christians who seek bread, swine's flesh, whiskey, wine, and beer first, and pray for spiritual food last. The Bible shows in the book of Exodus chapter 16, verses 2, 3, and 8, that this was the want of bread and meat, first of all, that gave Moses and Aaron much trouble trying to lead the people into the spiritual knowledge of Jehovah and self-independence. They even said that they were hungry. Oftentimes, they angered Moses and Aaron by their longing for the food of their slave masters, even while on their way to freedom and self-independence. The Muslims pray in their often repeated prayer to seek Allah's help in guiding them on the right path, the path of those of whom God has favored and not the path of those whom he has caused his anger and descended upon them, the Jews and Christians. This want of the slave master's bread, meat, and luxuries is depriving the so-called Negroes to day of their independence. O oh Allah, we beseech thee, thy help and ask thy protection. We believe in thee and trust in thee. We worship thee in the best manner and we think and we thank thee. We are not ungrateful to thee and we cast off and forsake him who disobeys thee. O oh Allah, thee do we serve and thee do we pray and make obedience. To thee do we flee and are quick. We hope for thy mercy and we fear thy chastisement. For surely thy chastisement overtakes the unbelievers. Now see the lost found members of the great black nation, the original people of the sun, are greatly improving their prayer, services, and obedience to the almighty God who came in the person of Farad Muhammad, found them, and to whom praises are due forever. For bringing us Islam, the true knowledge of God, our friend, and the devil, our enemy. To my people in America who bow in submission to Allah's will, he declares he will set us in heavens at once on our acceptance of him as our God. Good money, homes, friendships, and all walks of life. Reap for yourself the promised reward and blessings prophesied in the Bible and the Quran for us who turn to Allah in the last days of the world of the infidels. We have been looking toward the east from the direction the light of the truth has come and we have been reading for the past few weeks of the prayers made by the lost and the found members of the great nation of Islam and we are getting more knowledge of how to serve Allah in the best manner. As the above prayer reads, we worship Allah in the best manner. Remember, as we grow into the knowledge of Allah, the more we desire to serve him faithfully and give praises to him. We hear the lost found repeat the above words as follows. O oh Allah, we beseech thee thy help. For the first time, he is calling on Allah for help. Before being found, however, he had lifted his eyes into space and called on the God that the enemy infidels has directed him that actually does not exist. And he found no help coming to him from out of space. But today the prayer bears witness since the coming of Allah and the person of Master Ra Muhammad, to whom be given praise forever that he receives help from God. He received no protection from the God somewhere above the sun, moon, and stars that the enemy pointed out to him. And rest of the poor, lost, found, 
members of the Asiatic nation, the nation of Islam, the lost found received no help or protection until the appearance of Allah in the person of Master Muhammad. We hear him say, Now he that asks Allah's protection and belief in thee and trust in thee, he is confident today. He now puts his trust in Allah, who he knows will answer his prayers. As the Quran teaches him, Allah hears the prayers of the believers. He worships Allah now in the best manner. As he says the following, We laud thee in the best manner and we thank thee. We are not ungrateful to thee and we cast off and forsake him who disobeys thee. Even though they be his near of kin, a true believer will not befriend a disbeliever in Allah. The following prayer is for the messenger of Allah. O Allah, make Muhammad successful and the true followers of Muhammad successful, as thou did make Abraham successful and the true followers of Abraham successful. For surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. Allah, bless Muhammad and the true followers of Muhammad, as thou did bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham. Surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. In the above prayer, the believers of the lost and found members of the great nation pray for the messenger whom Allah God has raised among them and guide to the lost and now found path of Allah. For 400 years they have been wandering in darkness, blinded by the touch of Satan, the devil. But now the light of Allah has shone upon them and they have turned themselves now to him and they have submitted to Allah to do his will, being blessed as the Jews and the Arabs were to have a messenger born in their midst to teach and guide his people into the spirit and knowledge of his teacher, Almighty God, Allah in person. The believers are not satisfied with prayer and seeking refuge in Allah without asking a word of prayer for the success and blessings of Allah upon the messenger and the followers whom Allah has so abundantly bestowed upon them. The answer to Abraham's prayer that he raise a messenger from among them that he may teach the wisdom of the book Bible to so many of them who do not understand the very book, the Bible, in which they think they believe. But without the true knowledge or understanding of the scriptures of Moses and Jesus, therefore a correction must come to them in the way of true understanding of these scriptures in which their history is constantly referred to in the mentioning of the Jews and Christians through the prophets that were sent to them. The Orthodox Muslims think that this refers to Arabia and that Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, of nearly 1400 years ago was the one fulfilling the answer to Abraham's prayer. But if they look again and ponder over it, it is like their belief in thinking that Muhammad of nearly 1400 years ago was a prophet like Moses, that Moses prophesied in Deuteronomy 18.18. But they forget that Moses was a man who was raised in the house of bondage under a king who held him and his people in bondage to him and to his false worship of God and religion. And he desired no one to interfere with his teaching given to his slaves, his fear according to the Holy Quran, was that Moses would change their religion. The Orthodox Muslims think that this was fulfilled in the Meccan's opposition to Muhammad. Not so. He does not compare with the prophecy of a man like Moses, for there was no king singled out to oppose Muhammad in Mecca. There was no separation of the Arabs from any slave masters and a destruction of the slave masters. There was a certain class of people of science. The Meccans were not enslaved to any physical king and people, only to false belief. But remember that prophecy, like unto me, the man who had to be the one who received a revelation or guidance from Allah to physically liberate a people from the physical bondage of a superior force or ruler. He must fight with this particular ruling class to release his people, like Moses. Then he must give them their own religion, teach them the knowledge of the true God, Allah, and his true religion, Islam, and set up a completely new religious service never known to his people before. He must overcome them with nothing but the truth and the power and guidance of Allah, as Moses did with Pharaoh and his well armed army because he is not in a position to arm himself and his follower with carnal weapons. The enemy controls the manufacturer of arms. He must be like one like Moses, dependent upon Allah for the victory over his enemy. Here he shows forth in a land where Allah has not been worshipped and where Islam has not been accepted as a true religion. The power of Allah is shown by letting Allah fight his and his people's battle against 
the wicked oppressors. This is the true type of man like Moses. If you study the prophecy concerning the last messenger of God, according to the description given to the man by the Bible's prophecy in the Torah and gospel, you will find that he is a man, according to Psalms, with the name of Muhammad. And also you will find him in the revelations under the symbolic name Lamb. He gets the name praise from the honor of the 24 elders or Islamic scientists. The position that he is shown under the symbolic lamb in revelations is like the Quran's teaching of one who is illiterate and whom the people will find written down in the Torah and the gospel. The book of Isaiah, the parables of Jesus. This is the man the above prayer is made for because he, as one of the Islamic writers says, will be born among the infidels. The revelations of the Bible symbolically placed him in the midst of four beasts. Therefore, prayer must be made for his protection among the people without the teachings of Islam, not a country where they had never had any former prophets of Allah risen and set up signs of the future greatness of Islam, as had Arabia in the time of Muhammad. The signs of the future of Islam and his last messenger Abraham had already been set up in the holy city Mecca. Muhammad did not destroy these signs, but rather he repaired the sign to live until it had served its purpose. The following prayer shows the complete confidence in the apostle and his followers have in Allah and the great praise of Allah for the protection and blessings that they enjoy from him daily. I seek the protection of Allah, my Lord, from every fault and turn to him. O Allah, thou art the author of peace, from thee comes peace. Blessed art thou, O Lord, glory and honor. Nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah. He is the one and has no associate. His is the kingdom and for him is praise and he has power over all things. O Allah, there is none who can withhold what thou grantest and there is none who can give it what thou withholdest. And greatness does not benefit any possessor of greatness against thee. Let you and me who believe and learn and recite this prayer for the glory and honor give praise and thanks to Allah who is blessing us the lost and found of our people for guiding us on the right path that we too may be successful as the prophets and their followers before us we must remember that we cannot be proud over greatness only Allah for if Allah makes you great you are great indeed and if Allah brings you low none can raise you up but he Salvation has come to us from Allah. Let us rejoice in him and be thankful to him for visiting us and accepting us as his own. O you who believe, take not the Jews and Christians for friends. They are friends of each other, and whoever amongst you takes them for friends, he is indeed one of them. True Allah guides not the unjust people. That's in the Quran, Surah 5, Ayat 51. To Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and in the earth. And whatever you manifest and what is in your mind or hide it, Allah will call you to account according to it. So he forgives whom he pleases and chastises whom he pleases. And Allah is possessor over power over all things. And that's in the Quran, Surah 2, Ayat 284. The messenger believes in what has been revealed to him from his Lord, and so do the believers. They all believe in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers. We make no difference between any of his messengers. And they say, we hear and obey our Lord. By forgiveness do we crave, and to thee is the eventual course. And that's in the Quran, Surah 2, Ayat 285. Allah imposes not only any soul a duty beyond its scope, for it is which it earns of good and against it that which it works of evil. Our Lord punish us not if we forget to make a mistake. Our Lord do not lay on us a burden as thou didst lay on those before us. Our Lord impose not on us inflictions which we have not the strength to bear and pardon us and grant us protection and have mercy upon us. Thou art our pardon, so grant us and victory over the disbelieving people. Quran, Surah 2, Ayat 286. This is the question that is most frequently asked. What do the Muslims want? By both whites and blacks. The answer to this question I shall state as simply as possible. We want freedom. We want a full and complete freedom. 
We want justice, equal justice under the law. We want justice applied equally to all, regardless of creed, class, or color. We want equality of opportunity. We want equal membership in society with the best in civilized society. We want our people in America whose parents or grandparents were descendants from slaves to be allowed to establish a separate state or territory of their own, either on this continent or elsewhere. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to provide such land and that the area must be fertile and minerally rich. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to maintain and supply our needs in a separate territory for the next 20 or 25 years until we are able to produce and supply our own needs. Since we cannot get along with them in peace and equality after giving them 400 years of our sweat and blood, and receiving in return some of the worst treatment human beings have ever experienced. We believe our contribution to this land and the suffering forced upon us by white Americans justifies our demand for complete separation in a state or territory of our own. We want freedom for all believers of Islam now held in federal prisons. We want freedom for all black men and women now under the sentence in innumerable prisons across America as well as the South. We want every black man and woman to have the freedom to accept or reject being separated from the slave master's children and establish a land of their own. We know that the above plan for the solution of the black and white conflict is the best and only answer to the problem between two people. We want an immediate end to the police brutality and mob attacks against the so-called Negroes throughout the United States. We believe that the federal government should intercede to see that black men and women try and white courts receive justice in according with the laws of the land or allow us to build a new nation for ourselves dedicated to justice, freedom, and liberty. As long as we are not allowed to establish a state or territory of our own, we demand not only equal justice under the laws of the United States, but equal employment opportunities now. We do not believe that after 400 years of free or nearly free labor, sweat and blood, which has helped America become rich and powerful, so many thousands of black people should have to submit on relief or charity or live in poor houses. We want the government of the U.S. to exempt our people from all taxation as long as we are deprived of equal justice under the laws of the land. We want equal education for separate schools set up to 16 for boys and 18 for girls on the conditions that the girls be sent to women, colleges, and universities. We want all black children educated, taught, and trained by their own teacher. Under such school systems, we believe we will make a better nation of people. The United States government should provide free, all necessary textbooks and equipment, school and college buildings. The Muslim teachers be left free to teach and train their people in the way of righteousness, decency, and self-respect. We believe that intermarriage or race mixing should be prohibited. We want the religion of Islam taught without hindrance or suppression. These are some of the things that we, the Muslims, want for our people here in North America. We believe in the one God whose proper name is Allah. We believe in the Holy Quran and the scriptures of all of the prophets of God. We believe in the truth of the Bible, but we believe that it has been tampered with and must be reinterpreted so that mankind would not be snared by the falsehood that have been added to it. We believe in Allah's prophets and the scriptures they brought to the people. We believe in the resurrection of the dead, not in physical resurrection, but mental resurrection. We believe that the so-called Negroes are the most in need of mental resurrection. Therefore, we will be resurrected first. Therefore, we believe we are the people of God's choice as it is written that God would choose the rejected and the despised. We can find no other persons fitting this description in these last days more than the so-called Negroes in America. We believe in the resurrection of the righteous. We further believe in the judgment. We believe this first judgment will take place as God revealed in America. We believe that this is the time in history for the separation of the so-called Negroes and the so-called white Americans. We believe that the black man should be free in name as well as in fact. By this we mean that he should be free from the names imposed on him by his former slave masters, name which identifies him as being the slave master's children. We believe that if we are free indeed, we should go in our own people's names, the black people of the earth. 
We believe in justice for all, whether in God or not. We believe as others that we are due equal justice as human beings. We believe in equality as a nation of equals. We do not believe that we are equal with our slave masters in the status of free slaves. We recognize and respect American citizens as independent people, and we respect their laws which govern this nation. We believe that the offer of integration is hypocritical and is made by those who are trying to deceive the black people into believing that their 400-year-old open enemy of freedom, justice, and equality are all of a sudden their friends. Furthermore, we believe that such deception is intended to prevent black people from realizing that the time in history has arrived for the separation from the whites of this nation. If the white people are truthful about their professed friendship toward the so-called Negro, they can prove it by dividing up America and their slaves. We do not believe that America will ever be able to furnish enough jobs for her own millions of unemployed, in addition to jobs for the other 20 million black people. We believe that we who declared ourselves to be righteous Muslims should not participate in wars which take the lives of humans. We do not believe this nation should be forced to take part in such wars, for we have nothing to gain from it unless America gives us the necessary territory wherein we may have something to fight for. We believe our women should be respected and protected as the women of other nationalities are respected and protected. We believe in Allah God appeared in the person of Master Ra Muhammad, July 1930, the long-awaited Messiah of the Christians and the Mahdi of the Muslims. We believe further and lastly that Allah God and besides him there is no God and he will bring about a universal government of peace wherein we can live in peace together. I would like to put a little emphasis on some of what the Muslims want. If we ask you, meaning white America slave masters, for freedom indeed, I think that we are right. We use the words indeed as we have been your subjects now for 400 years. That is a long time to be subject to a people or the slaves of another people. 300 of those years we worked for you for nothing. And those 300 years we were treated like your own herd of cattle. You have no regard for human rights, no more than you did your animals. You slashed the backs of my fathers and my mothers without any mercies. You killed them wherever you felt like you wanted to, and you sweethearted with my grandparents. Truth hurts. When you went into our grandmothers and had children by them, and then you put them on the block for sale, and today you are still crossing over to our women, this should show you why we want to take leave of you today. In those days, you sold her children who were your own sons and daughters. I am telling you that my own grandparents told me. My father's mother told me her father was a white man. Today, our women are all subject to your biddings. You take their sons and bash their brains in with your clubs and blow their brains out with your gun throughout the country without due process of law that you already put there before them. You have in words trodden us under the foot in the name of civilization, and now you stand as our chief adversary to prevent us from escaping your evil and unjust doings to our people whose sweat and blood has helped to build the greatest country and government on earth. You are so rich today that you are able to feed almost every mouth in Europe. You are so rich that you can now give away billions of dollars to nations in order to get their friendship. You are so powerful that you command the high seas, the air, the land, even the ice caps of the poles of the earth. All this we helped you do. Some of us went to your wars, shooting down your enemy as you pointed them out to us, and we were being shot down also. If we cry out for justice, you twist it and make it look as if though we are the real enemies of justice. If we say to you that you are evil, you want to make a case against us for falsely accusing you when you know that you have never been no good to us. Today you are trying to deceive the poor once serving slaves of yours by telling them that you will now show a little friendship. I will let you ride beside me on my best transportation. I will also allow you to work in my office. I am going to put you in the government. What is that going to do for us and our children in the future? Will this help us to make a great future for our people and own what you still own, which is the place we can call our own? Why hinder us? 
Your dog is more classified as a citizen in the land that we are, the so-called Negroes. If the dog wants freedom, if the dog whines in the night because he's uncomfortable, you will get up and try to comfort it. But if you hear a million Negroes crying and suffering from the brutal treatment at your hand and the hand of your people, you will laugh. I am here with the truth. Take the words, turn them over and examine them. Put them on the scale of facts and weigh them. And if I am not teaching you the truth, I say, come up here and prove it. And I will lay down my head on the floor and let you chop it off. We want freedom indeed. Why should we not want to leave a people who have lynched and burned us? Why continue to send our own brother out there falling under the blows of the so-called police officers and falling from the bullet of his gun? I have seen police vex our people to try and make them say something so that they can beat or kill them. You say you want to help us? Help us to do what? If you do not want to help us to leave you with a good send-off, then what are you going to help us to do here if we stay? I have lived with you all my life. I was born in the South. I have looked upon the evil treatment of our people day and night. I have shared tears for you many times. No justice whatsoever. I have seen people kicked out and about who asked for a fair salary. I have heard it said to a brother, you take what I say. You don't figure behind me, nigger. We got 20 million people who have come according to the old prophets through toil and tribulations. We are here today asking for equal justice under your own law. We are asking for freedom that you claim you have given to us, freedom to do for ourselves. We do not want to be beggars, but if we are given freedom indeed, we can build for ourselves the same things that you have. Our people are educated in your colleges and universities. Our technicians and engineers of all kinds. Why shouldn't they go and make a way for their own people as a nation? Build and construct a government for their people as your fathers did for you when they crossed the Atlantic. They may be a little lazy and want to start at the top first, but you were not able to start at the top. You have to put you have to put it in their minds that they cannot go for themselves. How educated were your fathers when they crossed the Atlantic and started working for their freedom? They were not wise politicians and senators as you are today, but nevertheless, they kept digging and turning the soil, felling trees, pacing the country for a place for themselves. Today, they have made a nation. They were not satisfied with trying to do this alone. They had to go across the Atlantic and get our fathers to help them. If you wanted to be your lily white self, why didn't you go and get black people to come here? Why would you mix your blood with black people and yet deprive them of equal justice? We built your railroads with our own sweat. We plowed your farms and plantations. We cut down the underbush and trees. And now today you have replaced that kind of labor with mechanical labor and you don't have anything for us to do. With just two or three men, you can cultivate hundreds of acres of land with machine operations. You pick your cotton with a machine now. Everything is done mechanically today. Why don't you want us to leave you, especially when you do not want us to do anything but labor? Why shouldn't we want some of this earth where we can start building a government for the future of our people so that we would not be just a people of labor year after year for another people and all of their labor? still be subject to brutal treatment you should be ashamed of yourself today to lynch and kill the so-called negroes while you have an army full of negroes helping you to fight and protect and maintain the government you should be ashamed of it especially when that same man's father slaved for your fathers for nothing and now you will go and take him before your own judges and give him an unjust judgment this is a shame do you think you are going to get away with it forever we say allah god we say in the Arabic language, Allahu Akbar. We say in the Arabic language, La la ha la la illa la rasulullah. We say that in your midst today should make you tremble and go off and commit suicide. Those babies cry in the name of Allah. They were never taught by you to worship. You know that your time must be short. Today, I say you see all of those things. Hear all of them as the Bible's teaching, even of being plagued with divine plagues, and you still will not worship the true God of truth and justice. The white race has never believed in God, not the God of freedom, justice, and equality. The man of sin does not want the so-called poor Negroes to hear the truth, who are under your feet. He does not want them to seek help from God because he is guilty and he knows he has mistreated us. We 
called on the God that you said was right for a long time. For hundreds of years, we have been calling on your God and son both. I am sure today that God and his son that you are presented to us have been for white people. Surely they were not friends of ours. He has never heard us. He must have been off somewhere in the conversation over your future and did not have time to hear our prayers. But Allah hears ours. Allah acts. Never anymore will you fool us to bow and pray to a dead Jesus any more than a Moses or any of those dead prophets and hope that my people believe that there is still a Jesus killed and buried and still receiving their prayers. Are you serious today? I hope that they wake up and know that they haven't been heard since the day that he was killed. Those who represent that Jesus to you do not wait for Jesus to answer their prayers. They answer their own prayers. Get out of that kind of stuff. There is no such thing as dying and coming up out of the earth, meeting your friends and meeting those who died before you. I say get out of such slavery teaching. It keeps you blind, deaf and dumb to the reality. Get out of it. For if you depend on such, you will not believe in yourself. When you are dead, you are dead. I have proof of that. Do you have proof that what you say that is dead will come back? No. I say to you, my friend, the mentally dead are awakening. Your slave masters have deceived you. They want you remain deceived. They hate any one of you that will try to teach facts. They hate any one of you that want to become equal. They hate any one of you that wants justice. They do not want that. Yet they will tell you that they want to help you and they want to give you justice. But you don't get it. We want freedom. Indeed, we want to become human beings along with other human beings. We want the world to know that we love to be respected as other peoples who are now being respected. I say to you, my beloved, freedom indeed is what we want. Freedom to do for ourselves as we think best. This is what they, the white race, are fighting for themselves to do. To be free. To do as they want to do. And they are fighting to death for it. You and I should fight to death to be free and to do what we want. You know and I know how much these people hate me because I am teaching you the truth. And they know that I am doing a better job with you than any one of them who have appeared among you. If the white circle leaders want to keep their circle white, I say keep it white. If the Ku Klux Klan want to keep their race white, I say help yourself. Go for it. Now, when I say keep mine black, white circle league, German, Nazis, keep your mouth out of it. We want to build our nation that will be recognized as a nation that will be self-respecting and receive respect of other nations of the earth. I say we have a God that will make a place for us here. What the Muslims want for the whole black nation and our people is freedom, justice, and equality. That is what we want for you. We cannot enjoy and exercise freedom, justice, and equality unless we have a home on this earth that we can call our own.